Welcome, everyone. So we are here in the session on homelessness, and the question um, here in our description is, why are we not having success? Um, and I am Representative Nicole Macri. I represent the 43rd Legislative District um, in Seattle. Uh, I was elected in 2016, and I'm serving in my first year in the legislature. And how about we introduce the rest? And sure. My name is Jonathan Martin. I'm the editor of Project Homeless, a new, uh, for the Seattle Times, uh, a new um, reporting team focused on homelessness. My name is uh, Senator Mark Melosha from Federal Way from the 30th District, uh, and I am uh, on the uh, Human Summers Mental Health and Housing Committee, and, and my, one of my proudest achievements, achievements is passing the 10-year plan in Homeless Bill 2163 in 2005, which I'll talk about a little bit here later. I'm George Scarola, and up until the new mayor um, took office, uh, Mayor Dirk and I was the director of homelessness. Um, I promptly submitted my resignation, not because I, I think she's going to be great, but just to give her a, a, um, a clean shot at, at exactly what she wants to do, and that hasn't had any effect yet, <laughs> but maybe after today. Uh, so why don't we kick off, George, we didn't really talk about this beforehand, but why don't we sort of kick off with a few minutes of intro, and we hope to leave a, a few, um, some time at the end for questions and answers to have some discussion. I bet um, for those of you who came here, you have some questions for us. So DJ asked me to do this, and, and I warned him I might not be sure of my, who I was at that point. Um, but I... I want to start by saying I don't accept the premise that we're not having success. Um, Seattle, and, and which is what I know the best, um, has been a leader and an innovator in a number of, of ways. Uh, we have just done a major um, overhaul of the way we fund nonprofits, painful. We're asking nonprofits that are already stressed to do their work even more efficiently to make getting people housed the number one priority. Uh, it's data-driven decision-making, a lot of the things that, uh, the accountability that uh, Senator Melosha has been arguing for. Um, we have set up uh, six sanctioned encampments. People are coming from all over the West Coast to see how they work. Sanctioned encampments are, are tiny home villages, self-managed for the most part, um, and they're having good success. We set up a navigation center, which um, uh, Representative Nicole Macri's organization runs. Uh, it is a state-of-the-art, how do you help people with the biggest obstacles and barriers to housing get housing. Uh, we have built a team of people who are going out into the field and dealing with people who, have, who are chronically homeless, who have been homeless in many cases for a decade or more and we're helping them find housing. We're also asking them to leave places that are dangerous and in, inappropriate for humans to live in. Uh, controversial, we've asked 1,700 people to move in the last six months, uh, uh, last year. There have been three arrests. So this group has really, and seven, oh, 650 people have taken some offer of shelter. So they were living outside in terrible situation. They've taken some shelter or s some kind of housing better than living outside. And our, our argument would be they probably would not have without the encouragement and requirement of the navigation team, which is both police officers and outreach workers working together. So we think we've had some success. The problem is quite simple. We, we help about 650 uh, households in King County a month get stable housing. We think there are about twice as many who become homeless in the same period. Um, Jonathan, how about I sure. pick on you to give us a little bit of background from your perspective? Sure. So uh, the um, Project Homeless team has been up for about um, two months and um, had a chance to talk to people all over the community. Um, 
including folks, some of the folks here at the table. Um, and uh, I want to just tell you, we, we had a, we, we're going to be doing this for the next year, hopefully longer. Um, and the mission of this, of my team, is to really uh, explore and watchdog the home, the crisis response system, almost crisis response system, and look for solutions from elsewhere in the country. So, watch for more of our stories in the next year. Um, so, um, I, I've had three takeaways so far in the uh, uh, in the first few months. Um, first is that the, the governance structure we've set up for the homeless response system is a problem. Um, there is, um, really is not anybody really in charge. Um, <laughs> Mark, I stole Mark's line. Um, elsewhere in the country, we've realized that there is, um, there's been an effort to basically to consolidate um, the local government, state government, um, and in some cases, philanthropies under one roof, kind of one under one umbrella. Um, here in Washington, um, about 10 years ago, in the Committee on Home, the 10-year plan, we set up a structure where you have <clears throat> a, a coordinating agency called All Home, um, run by Mark, and there in the back, you can blame him. Um, <laughs> uh, that is a coordinating agency, but under that umbrella, there's still the local government, Seattle. Um, Seattle and the, and, the, and the regional cities and King County and with state money and federal money passing through. Uh, what that means is that um, we have a coordinating agency that doesn't have budgetary power. Um, so if you're going to, if you're going to have um, all of your strategies align in one direction, um, there's a limited power to convince, say, the Seattle City Council, which has its own unique politics, to go swim in the same direction um, as the King County Council. Um, Seattle City Government generally funds shelters, oftentimes, um, and the King County is responsible generally for mental health and chemical dependency. You'd think those are interrelated problems, um, interrelated solutions, interrelated strategies, but by the, due to the fact that there is not one person in charge, um, I've seen so far that being a problem. Um, the the other take, one of my other takeaways is that this is going to be around for a while. Um, one of the um, it questions I, I get frequently is um, basically about all the people migrating here. Why do we, have, why we are a magnet effect? Why is everybody coming here? And <clears throat> I don't think that's really borne out by the data, um, but it's also reflective of a real subset of the homeless population. If there are people coming here, I'm not really sure there are, that we're really talking about is kind of the chronic homeless. Um, and Chronic homeless, uh, the chronic, um, ho chronically homeless is a fairly small subset of the overall homeless population that comes through our system each year. You know, kids are about 20% of the population. Um, you know, kids under 25, about 20% of the population. You know, we just did a budget, we just did a graphic, um, looked at people being stuck in shelters, people who stayed in shelter for a long time. Um, and we found that about 9% of the people were the ones who were basically stuck. It was 9% of the people in shelter consumed about 50% of the bed days. And it told me that like what we're really talking about in the home, in the overall, the, you know, whatever is 40,000 people that are homeless in King County a good year, the chronically homework are, are about this, about that much, that many of them. And the reason why it says it's gonna be around for a while is that what that tells me is the rest of the homeless population is um, oftentimes newly homeless or they're homeless not because of the issues of people that are chronically homeless, um, we have a lot of economic um, uh, economic strife. Um, you really, what we've really seen, we know we, we know we are a nation of debt, and people who become who have a um, uh, a crisis in their families uh, don't have the ability to lean back on savings um, and bounce back. Um, so you have it's the the fall from working class into homelessness is very quick, and. My reporters are out here and talking to people every day who were um, just homeless, just became homeless, had a, you know, some cases had a, you know, domestic violence or a, or a substance abuse problem. Um, things crumbled rather quickly, and um, they're now living in a tent under King, uh, under I-5. Um, so, um, and I think we're also going to be around for a while because. Um, I don't see any end in sight to Seattle being one of the winners in the in the global economy. Um, if Amazon stops slowing down, it starts slowing down right now. Um, I imagine there's going to be other tech companies that will be happy to keep hiring here. Um, we have fundamentally reset the cost of living here. 
um, and housing. And uh, that's, uh, that's gonna be around for a while and as long as the housing costs are so dramatically, have dramatic uh, spikes, um, we're gonna have a homeless population. Um, and the other takeaway is, and I don't mean sound like, a, um, I know I'm a, supposed to be sound like a cynical journalist, but um, I'm actually am kind of impressed that there's a lot of good work going on. Um, you know, George mentioned the, um, the, some of the, the reforms that are going on. Um, it was a big deal to get um, Seattle to rebid its um, homeless contracts um, for the first time in 10 years. Um, sh I, I don't think there's a really good case why it didn't happen earlier. Um, there's also a real, um, there's been a real shift towards having um, performance data and performance contracts. Um, again, we can argue about whether those should have been, I imagine Mark will say those should have happened a long time ago, um, but they, um, there is a, that push is real, and I think as a, as a taxpayer, as a citizen, as one of Nicole Macri's constituents, um, I'm, um, I'm pleased that there are contract, contractors um, are being held to standards. Um, you know, the other thing, uh, George also mentioned um, one of the interesting elements um, of our homeless problem right now is the tents. Um, that is driving, the number of tents um, is driving um, anxiety. I see it as a longtime Seattleite. It's kind of a, there's a little, there's a conflict in the sort of the soul of the city right now um, because Seattle likes to think of itself as a progressive city, open, um, broad minded and fairly open hearted. Um, but the tents are um, really, I think, causing a tremendous amount of tension and second guessing about um, how broad minded and open hearted uh, we should be as a city. Um, and the team that George mentioned, the navigation team, um, is an interesting response to that. Um, one of my reporters, Viana Davila, just did a long story in the um, paper last, last Sunday um, about the team and what it actually means to go out and um, talk to the people in the, in the uh, camps, uh, in the tents, try and get them indoors, and the challenges for doing that. Um, so I, there, are, there is interesting elements going on. Um, you know, I think that um, there's a lot of work that still could be done, um, but I'm not quite as cynical as I was, to be honest with you, when I took the job two months ago. So um, <laughs> I'll pass that to Nicole, or, or Mark. As I mentioned, I was the author of the 10-year plan in homelessness and set up that struct, governor structure you talked about. Unfortunately, at the last second, all the accountability in that was made optional and, um, and one other policy decision to allow homeless individuals to receive services and remain anonymous in the HMIS system. The only government program we have, um, people with mental illness, substance abuse, criminal, what issues to remain below the radar and not get into long-term treatment. Um, since then, um, we've had, and I, I had 50 issues we have to do that. I had to narrow it down to eight here <laughs> for this thing. But the data is clear, and let me show you the data from the 10-year plan. From 2007 to 2017, homelessness in our state, and this data is current as of uh, spring this year, homeless in our state is down 28%. It is up 47% in King County, and the rest of the state, it is down. 40% in, well, I got the numbers right here, might as well read it right here. 40% in King County, the entire state was by itself would be minus 28%, rest of the state was 40% down. So the problem we have with homelessness is in King County. It used to be one third of the homeless was in King County, now 53% of all homeless in our state is in King County. That's the problem. The governance structure, and you're absolutely right, is issue number one. We need strong, strategic, honest leadership at state and county level. Right now, I would have given an award to Ed Murray and to George right here. They have been the strongest leaders on homelessness of actually looking at problems, being honest what the problems are, and actually pushing back on the status quo to solve the problems. And also those 12 counties who actually met the goal of reducing homelessness by 50% in 10 years. 12 counties met the goal. 19 counties reduced homelessness, and there were nine counties where homelessness went up. And again, King County, my county, was the disaster at 47%. Okay, so why 
don't we have strong leadership here in King County? We need a homeless czar in King County, and we need one in Seattle, and Ed Murray appointed George. Best decision ever. We have none at the state levels. And then Ed Murray and George started tackling those issues one by one. Uh, and they started making accountability and performance a focus. Now, it's not to my standards, it's not Baldridge lean, ISO 9001 quality, but they're starting to ask the questions. I hope the next step is we have quality management systems in place as good as outside in the real world, focusing on costs, efficiency, effectiveness, and ethics. It's possible. It doesn't take hard for government to learn basic quality management skills, but we don't do it in government. Uh, third thing, real accountability metrics. I get this data from uh, Department of Commerce in uh, Olympia. They have all the data. They're desperately trying to build the data systems now in King County and in Seattle. Uh, they still got quite a long way to go, but they're starting to realize cost data is really hard to come with. What's the cost per activity? And I'll give you an example, which is completely atrocious. I don't know if you know this right now, but right now our effectiveness rate for, for, for substance abuse is 8%. We spend almost a billion dollars on substance abuse, 8% effective? When somebody says we need more substance abuse, no, we need more effective substance abuse. So that's what quality management brings to the table. Uh, that's what having good metrics brings on the table. You're actually fixing those issues. And as I said, the HMIS system, the housing management information system we have in places, there's very hard, we have, right now we have very few broad strategic measures we're uh, uh, tracking. For example, we should have a daily count of how many people are homeless in the 11,000 in King County that are in the streets every day. How many new, how many are in the system, and are they moving up? We can't track that right now. And it's a piece of cake, 300,000 a year. In two years, we'll have it. We're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in King County, but we won't spend $300,000 to track everybody day by day. Children, mentally ill, disabled, and we allow that to happen because we don't want to spend money on accountability. Okay, next one, real homeless plans. We don't have, uh, even though the bill mandated real homeless plans at the state level, at the county levels, uh, not at the city levels, uh, the plans are widely varying. We have to demand a real plan like we have a real plan to build a bridge or build a building. A budget, it's, it, it, is, uh, it, is, uh, it is actually accomplished goals, it is readable, and it actually makes sense. When I pass that bill, I said every county has to have a plan to, to reduce homelessness by 50% in 10 years. Come up with that plan. Very few counties did that. Right now we pass a goal of, you know, we're past the 10 years, but where's the new goal? We can't start unless somebody says, and I can't get Department of Commerce, the executive branch, and I can't get any of the counties to say, come up with their new goal. 20% in five years? 50% in 10 years? What is the new goal? If we can't have a plan for success unless, uh, unless we actually set our goal. So that's another thing we need to do. Uh, issue five, I'm almost halfway, past halfway there. We need collaborative bipartisan solutions, like this conference, bipartisan, all voices. There's an interesting discussion we have about homelessness in Seattle, in King County. Uh, uh, anybody here from the council? I don't see anybody. Uh, it's, uh, frankly, I'll just say it straight. It's between the socials and the Democrats, the liberal Democrats. That's a conversation. That's not bipartisanship. We need to talk about everybody else who's, what? It's two parties. Yeah, it's two parties, right, <laughs> in Seattle. But we need to talk with people who are maybe moderate Democrats, maybe conservatives, liberal, maybe people outside that focus. But housing and homeless policy is developed here in, um, in, in Seattle. We have to broaden the diversity of thought and ideas for get a solution. It can't be decided within, you know, uh, five miles of uh, the Space Needle. Affordable housing. Uh, everybody in King County knows the problems with housing in, uh, in uh, King County. When the data says that homelessness goes up 15 to 32 percent every hundred dollars in rent, and rent's going up like clockwork over hundred dollars, uh, hundred dollars a, a, a month per year. We we'll never fix homelessness and we address the affordable housing issue. But I mean, we have to fetch it efficiently 
There was something on the Dave Ross show the other day he said they're spending government dollars on affordable housing costing $500,000 a unit. That's an insane cost per unit. We'll never help homelessness. We'll never be able to build it if we're spending $500,000 a unit on affordable housing. The GMA is broken. Unless we fix the affordable housing problem in King County, not just Seattle is doomed. Federal Way, where I live, is doomed. Snohomish County and Pierce County is doomed. We got to fix that affordable housing problem. Interventions and sweeps into an effective mental health criminal justice system. Uh, they started doing this here in Seattle. Wonderful. Having an illegal encampment is, in my mind, immoral. What goes on there? It's horrible if you listen to the stories. We need authorized encampments. My goal would be to end illegal encampments in Seattle within two years. I'll find the money. But having people in these illegal jungles is insane. Children, we can do better than that. People in those jungles don't get treatment, don't improve. Last issue. Uh, values matter, character matter, culture matters. We need a culture here that focus on, 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 on the Protestant work ethic, faith, family, marriage, sacrifice, children. If we don't have that structure, you know, our society, everybody knows, Ruben Carlisle said it this morning, it's falling apart because we've, we're going into warring camps and we don't care about basic institutional sacrifice and serving each other and, uh, and community. If we're all about ourselves, this kind of narcissistic you know, world we live in, you know, we, if people don't take responsibility for themselves and their neighborhoods and community, if we're not enforcing laws, if we're not promoting the common good, I think we're doomed. I mean, we have to have values to guide us. And, uh, it's, and, and, and you think about all the people, I mean, 27 years on the street, 17 years on the street, they're not working. How do we get people reintegrated back into their community, into their family. If we had strong families, strong communities, no drugs, people willing to work, homelessness would cut in half within a year. You see that outside in many different communities in our state. People taking care of ourselves. If we don't do this, we'll never get control of our drug problem or anything else. Thank you. Great, thank you. So in addition to serving in the legislature, I have um, worked on issues of homelessness, and affordable housing, and behavioral health care for um, a little over two decades. I um, have been at the forefront of what's known as the Housing First Movement nationally um, and locally in Seattle, across the state of Washington. And through that experience, um, I have thought about the drivers of homelessness um, for a long time. And I think we're really in an interesting and unfortunate time um, along the lines of what Jonathan was observing. So I would say that um, we really had a single era of, of modern day homelessness that started about the late, mid to late 1970s um, and went through 2013. And I would say today we are in the second modern era of homelessness. Um, because we really did see a dramatic change, um, particularly in West Coast cities, although this is a phenomenon that's crossing the country right now. And, and I look back to 2013 um, as the start of that. So in the mid, mid to late 1970s, we were in a recessionary period, and at the same time, there were beginning efforts to um, move our behavioral health system um, from a state hospital-based system to a community-based system. And there were many um, failures in that transition. Um, through the 1980s and the 1990s, we saw uh, federal support for subsidized housing um, really reduce dramatically. Um, starting in the early days of President Reagan's um, administration and going all the way through um, to through the Ob Obama administration. Um, the convergence of um, the loss of that federal funding, the failure of, of um, bringing community-based mental health um, really drove, I think, big increases in homelessness. Um, 
I would say at the same time, there was a deliberate effort by the federal government to really localize solutions to homelessness. So this, the proliferation of tenure plans to end homelessness um, really um, being driven by the federal government to be done at the county and city levels um, was part of the challenge of how do local communities deal with what really is a national problem. Um, Washington State, I think, was at the forefront, as, as Mark was saying, in, 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 and thanks in large part to his leadership, in creating a statewide um, plan to end homelessness. And I think the results of that actually were really um, positive, in that from 2005 to 2013, we did see pretty dramatic reductions in per capita rates of homelessness. Um, uh, nearly 30% uh, nearly 30% drop in per capita um, homelessness. Um, and then in 2013, we started to see that come up again. And that's when we started to see tents, not only in Seattle, but along the I-5 corridor, and today really stretching out into communities across Washington State. Um, the change that happened then in 2013 uh, was multi-pronged. One is we started to see really dramatic um, upturn in population growth um, in Washington State, particularly in the Puget Sound area and specifically within Seattle and King County. Um, and um, at, so as that occurred, the, the resources that we had available um, remained sort of relatively flat to the growing uh, population generally, and it, essentially was a game of musical chairs. Where we are today is that we have a um, dramatic shortage of housing that has built over time, but was exacerbated really by this huge population growth and um, housing production that didn't match the needs of the folks um, who need housing. And really the challenge that we have with homelessness today is that um, we have dramatic housing shortage. Um, this can be seen in the fact that between 2005 and 2016, we had a nearly 1.2 million um, person growth in population in Washington state. And at the same time, we saw an increase of about 375,000 units of housing statewide. Um, what that translates to is essentially population growth of about 19% over a decade's period and a proportional increase in housing units of about 14%. So there, that delta of 5% between the number of people and the number of housing units um, is what can um, account for both reduced vacancy rates in housing, increased rents, and subsequent increasing um, rates of homelessness. And we know now that homelessness is touching all counties um, of Washington State. I think what um, Senator Malosha said is accurate, that these um, most dramatic um, growths in, ho in homelessness um, are specific to certain areas of the state. Uh, I would argue, however, that they're not only concentrated in King County. Um, we have seen um, big housing shortages in other parts of the state as well, um, and that can be seen through the dramatically reduced um, the vacancy rates going down. So uh, 10 years ago, the vacancy rate in w across Washington State for rental housing was 5.8%, and today it's 3.2% um, statewide. Uh, we know that in Clallam County, the vacancy rate 10 years ago was 11.8%, and today is under 2%. Um, and we can see that there's growing homelessness out on the peninsula on, in Clallam County. And likewise, in Whatcom County, um, we saw a dramatic drop in, in housing availability and vacancy rate. The, the rental housing uh, vacancy rate in Bellingham today is 0%. That means essentially every apartment um, is filled and there are no apartments available. Um, and these are, that those are the primary drivers uh, of homelessness. 
So why we are um, having challenges right now is because the housing production, and we do see a lot of cranes, particularly in downtown Seattle and throughout, and throughout areas of King County, is that the housing that we are producing is not um, meeting the needs of the folks with the, who have the greatest housing needs. The, the private market um, ha is not responding to the needs of, of the low and middle income folks. And I would argue that the private market um, has never and will never um, respond to the needs of those with the most extremely low incomes um, and those uh, folks who have a lot of um, complications in their life, be it um, drug use, mental illness, physical disabilities, et cetera. Um, and so what I think the challenge we have is, is to figure out not only how um, how government can work with private sector to drive the right balance of housing production over time to make sure that we are seeing increases in housing across all income um, spectrums, but that we are driving a homeless response system that is um, engaging the people, that is set up to engage the people who are most in need of housing, um, help navigate them to housing, and make sure that we have the housing for the folks uh, most in need available. So the idea um, that we create affordable housing or low-income subsidized housing generally is inadequate. We really need to look at the specific folks who um, are most in need. We could argue that those are the people who are currently unsheltered and on the street. We can argue that those are the people who have experienced homelessness for the longest period of time as being the ones who are most in need of housing. Um, engage them. Um, usually that means by reducing the hurdles that they need um, to overcome in order to get services, um, meaning don't rule people out because of their life choices or their conditions. Um, provide robust service to navigate them to housing and make sure that that housing is available. Um, the challenge we have right now is that we, um, I think, lack discipline in, in following the, those um, prongs. We talk about them um, routinely, but we sort of focus on different aspects the, of them over time. We'll sort of do um, you know, bits and spurts of housing production of certain kinds of specialized housing. We'll get sort of distracted by that, and we'll focus on engagement strategies for um, folks on the street, the navigation teams, I would argue, is one good example of that, of an effective strategy, but it's sort of whiplash in how we build our homeless policy. Um, and then we will build up as the new um, funding um, redirection that was re referenced in the city of Seattle. Um, we will focus on robust services for people who are homeless. But if we don't scale all aspects of the system um, simultaneously, we will continue to see these challenges. You know, I was reflecting on about a decade ago, we would often, um, talk as we were, um, I was an advocate then, before I was a lawmaker, um, talk about how we, um, how are we really gonna scale up the response? And a common refrain was that we can't build our way out of this problem. But what we have, I think, found, or what I would re reflect back on, is that we really missed huge opportunities to build a lot more of our way out of this problem than we should have. Currently, I know in King County, um, we have an estimated um, affordable housing shortage, so number of units that we really need for the people who are below 80% of our area median income of 156,000 units. 156,000 units is, is the shortage. Um, the majority of those units that shortage is for folks who are below 30% of area median income or who are, who are earning under $18,000 a year. Um, so we have a long way to go. I think one of the um, reasons why we haven't gotten there yet is that we haven't really thought about a solution that is relative to the scale of the problem. 
Um, and so those, and so I think we really need to change our thinking um, there. And as I said earlier, think about the role that government can play, particularly in driving protect production um, at those lowest ends of the income scale, making sure we have the appropriate services for those folks, and making sure that the private market um, can support housing production for middle income um, folks and to the extent possible can be incentivized or regulated towards some production for, for lower wage workers. Um, but if, we d if we're not um, really careful about how we um, target our solutions, we're not going to see the solutions that we need. Um, and to that point, I think um, Mark is correct in that we need um, to know who is currently homeless and, and work individually to navigate each one of those folks to a housing solution. Um, I know that um, in King County and in many communities across uh, the country, there's been more efforts to do what's called by name lists. Identify everyone who's homeless in your community, know their name, um, and have service providers work together to navigate them to, ha to housing. So I would say we, we have a good sense of what the solutions are. We lack um, discipline, as is the case in policymaking, and staying with the things that work. We lack um, discipline in evaluating um, solutions so we understand what is working and what is not working and recalibrate our solutions when the results are not um, giving us um, the answers that we need. Um, and we, um, we do lack coordination. I would argue, though, even the, um, even the communities that have great leadership and coordination, um, a single point of contact, they have a head of homelessness in New York City, they have a head of homelessness in, in San Francisco where they have a unified city and county government. Um, I don't think they're doing much better than we are here in King County. So I would say that um, system governance and coordination is a big part of it, um, but isn't going to be the game changer. Housing production and availability, I think, really is going to be. Yeah. So, so I, I, I just wholeheartedly endorse what Nicole has said. Um, if I were going to, if I were the new mayor, I would, I would have what you're talking about, the uh, highly coordinated effort. And given the, you know where we are, it's going to be with uh, Dow Constantine, the county exec, and build housing. Housing's the answer. We know we can house virtually everybody, no matter what their issues are, which is the housing first um, slogan. But it's true. We know how to do it. In Seattle, there are 45,000 households that are paying low-income households that are paying more than 50% of their income. So these are people already poor who are paying more than 50% of their low income on rent. And those units are getting harder and harder to find. So we do need to build housing. Should we? Yeah, should we open up to questions? Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. The question was I, th I mentioned uh, problems in uh, coordination and um, what was the other one? Discipline. Uh, discipline. Yeah, but not in in uh, funding. Yeah. So I would say uh, resources of, is a big challenge. It might be the primary challenge that we have. And when I say we haven't thought about solutions to the scale of the problem, is that's essentially what I mean. So sort of my back in the envelope um, calculation is um, to address. Um, the, ha the housing shortage that we have in King County, we should be thinking of a number between 25 and $50 billion um, in government um, investment um, and leverage private investment, right? So that um, isn't out of scale with some other policy um, investments that we've thought about. Um, the Regionally, we passed a, a <coughs> transit package that was valued at over $50 billion over 40 years. Um, and we have certainly invested in other areas of infrastructure. Um, the scale of the problem is in part related to the fact that we have let it get so bad over a long period of time, um, which is why we need to really think about big time solutions. And I know that um, 
other Western states, including Oregon and, and California, have been thinking a lot more bigger scale than we have in, in Washington state. So one of the things I think we need to work towards is getting a sort of a shared understanding of the problem, and I agree wholeheartedly that bipartisan um, solutions are the way to go. We have solved other major infrastructure problems. We just made a multi-billion dollar investment um, in, in uh, K-12 public schools. In the past, we have made big investments in higher education and in transportation, including roads and transit um, in Washington state. So I, this, to me, feels like a problem that's not easy, but that is surmountable. Um, and we have... Um, been a leader in innovation in a number of areas in Washington State, and I would argue including in behavioral health and in homelessness and affordable housing, and um, we're far above average. Um, the issue really is an issue of scale. And if I can add something to that, um, I ag actually agree with Nicole's numbers. Um, I think we need $5 billion to solve the homeless problem in King County, and $25 billion to solve the affordable housing problem. Um, and that's why I've said in speeches, I would have done half of sound transit for housing in Seattle. That would pro be problem solved. Or put an initiative on the ballot to, to raise that much money. But that's, that's the scale we need. Or you let the, we get rid of the GMIA and say, let the uh, developers go wild, build a zillion units. Or you freeze um, development. No more businesses in Seattle. Just like the Hearst decision, you know, no more development unless there's enough water. No more business in Seattle until they build another 100,000 units. But we can't do it at $500,000 a unit. That's the cost. Why does it cost $500,000 per unit to do affordable housing in Seattle? One, uh, I'm going um, to touch the, one of the third rails of Olympia um, in the GMA, the Growth Management Act. Um, you know, I was an observation um, I was made me the other day that. Um, the Growth Management Act requires um, environmental standards for um, uh, when you're doing growth. It doesn't have affordable housing standards in it. And um, I know that the politics of the Growth Management Act are, um, like I said, a, a third rail stuff, but I think it is interesting if we're responding, at the time when we were responding, we did the Growth Management Act, we were responding to a concern that we were um, paving, the, paving the farms. And today we're responding to a different problem. It would be interesting to see legis the legislature take up the issue of GMA and adding an affordable housing requirement. I agree. That would be very interesting. And I think the issue of the GMA touches right on to what Mark was saying before about our values, right? So the GMA, I think, is an expression of values in Washington. It's a beautiful um, place to live. It's um, geographically diverse. Um, I would argue that um, we've been able to preserve that compared to other areas of the country because of the uh, wisdom of enacting the Growth Management Act when we did to, to stave off um, sprawl that would have um, degrading effects to many areas of the state. Um, so I think uh, there is this balance between local control um, and the role of local zoning ordinances, how that drives um, housing production at the local level, and what that means for um, challenges like um, housing affordability and homelessness that are regional and in many ways national. So yeah, we have a lot of conversation about the GMA in Olympia. Um, Adding uh, more nuance about the role of affordability would be interesting. I know in California, um, they, the state government, the legislature got far more prescriptive um, in, in 2017 legislation around um, requiring affordable um, housing in, in their um, local um, housing plans than they had before. And uh, I don't see us getting there in the short session in 2018, but I think at a certain point we're going to have to talk more about the role of state policy and driving affordability in cities across the state. Questions? Who knows? Stranger things have happened. <laughs> so we're right at time, but maybe if folks are available, we can save for one more question and then wrap it up. So I want to throw out something.
Yeah, so that is a... Um, you want to repeat the question? Yeah. No, to repeat the question, the issue around um, ID laws and getting state-issued IDs um, as a one a a gateway to um, housing and employment opportunities. Um, and uh, there has been... We, ha we did have a lot of policy conversation in 2017, and I think in sessions previous to that, about, f about how to implement federally um, imposed um, rules around um, identification, um, the Real ID Act of the federal government and how that relates to um, interstate uh, travel, particularly air travel within the United States. Um, and uh, to your point around what are our current standards around getting state ID and how that, imp how that impacts folks, we do know that it can be certainly a hurdle to employment and housing for people who are most at risk and um, who have housing challenges. Uh, it was interesting that in just a few weeks ago, we had a group of legislators come through Seattle to tour some affordable housing and homeless um, intervention problems, and that is an issue that came up routinely throughout our throughout our, our full day tour. Um, and a number of us um, who attended that have been talking about: Is there a way that we can um, work with the Department of Licensing specifically to assist people um, who are um, homeless or um, who are sort of systematically excluded from housing and employment opportunities to make that? Um, make obtaining ID a lot easier through some kind of a liaison role within the um, State Department of Licensing. That is one of many, many, many hurdles that people have, um, but it, I think it's a, it's a good one to, to, to consider. So with that, um, thank you. I think the panelists will be here just for a couple more minutes if folks have individual questions. Thanks for being here today. Thank you.